Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're taking our fourth look through my vintage penguin book collection and we're going to be giving all the books a really really good clean. Now we're starting with penguin number 167 and we're going to be going up to about number 230 something like that so a, a full box load or a, a complete shelf from my collection. So without further ado then let's get stuck in. So we got 167 here the unseemly adventure. Ralph Strauss. Now we may have an old one in a dust wrapper, but I think by this point, Penguin were just on the verge of dropping dust wrappers as a regular thing. So this is 1938, this one. And of course, we are getting quite close to the start of the Second World War now. And already certain things such as paper are starting to become um, a little bit of a scarcer commodity. However, Penguin have been going for three years at this point, so and their sales were fantastic right off the block. So because of that, Penguin's paper allowance was fantastic compared to most publishers. So they have plenty to keep them going for a little while yet. Um, so this is a travel and adventure one in the Cerise covers, the House of Exile, Nora Wall. And to be honest, the books in this period are very robust, they're very well made, and on the whole have survived quite well compared to the books of literally just a few years later when uh, wartime paper rationing kicks in. And 6-9, this is a blue one, it's a biography, as we were. And we'll see uh, quite a range of uh, penguin colours as we work our way through these today. 170, Selected, second volume of Selected Modern Short Stories. But even if they don't need a lot of work, I think it's still any excuse to have a look through them, you know? Now there is a little name up there, but it's in pen, so I'm not gonna be able to do anything with that one, sadly. One seventy one Peking Picnic. Little advert on the back there for the penguins being published around this time, October and November nineteen thirty-eight. So uh these are all as we film this, eighty-two years old, incredibly. And some of them, when you think of their age, they're in phenomenal condition. And this this one here is absolutely beautiful. Chances are uh, this has come out of a wrapper of some sort and I've just popped on the shelf to look as good as possible. But look at this, I've just seen something. Looks like we've got some pencil inside. There's also a little bit of pen, but I would like to get that pencil out. So I'm going to use Peking Picnic as a bit of a, a rest so I can now rub on that without doing any extra harm to the cover here because that is quite um, it's quite distracting from a book that's in beautiful condition, apart from that. Now, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be on very hard, so it's uh, my rubber's taking the pencil off without too much effort. But I think that it's still going to leave a few little pen marks underneath, but I think that'll be better than what was there. Well, actually, the stuff that I thought was pen seems to be a coloured pencil, so that's a bonus. Or it was an ink which wasn't too... Maybe it was a crayon or something, I don't know. Oh, it is still leaving it there, but it is fading it. So, better than... Uh, still better than what I thought. Evidently, someone was keeping score. Maybe they were playing cards or something. Playing a game and they needed somewhere. to jot the scores down. So I'm filming this one on a midweek afternoon. It's bright and sunny outside. It's first signs of spring. And uh, it doesn't appear to be, it's midweek, so uh, there doesn't appear to be anybody out in their gardens mowing the lawn or anything like that. I am in the studio now, and uh, hopefully this is the, the perfect environment 
to record these videos. Certainly it's nice to have everything permanently set up so I can just come into the studio here and uh, hit the old cameras. Well, there we are. So it didn't quite get off all the little ink, but that's miles better, isn't it? Yeah, pleased with that. So that was 172. Mess of rubber shavings there. <laughs> 173, Ethan from Edith Wharton. And I have to say that reading these books, they're so well produced. They're an absolute delight to read even today. They're so well produced. Just beautiful. And this is how, this is why I fell in love with the penguins all those years ago. It's just because the books were so, so nice. I'm keeping my eyes peeled to see if there's any prices inside and any spines needing uh, to be sorted out. 175. Grand Babylon Hotel. It looks as if that's already had the spine repaired on it at the bottom. But that's all right. One less thing to do. And that's one of this tiny stack here. Now that one is going to need a little bit of uh, gluing back down, isn't it? Ragged banners. Okay, let me, uh, I'm just going to glue that little piece down at the top of the spine. It's not going to need a lot of glue, just a slither. Just a slither in there, I think. Well, actually, maybe two slithers. Yeah, I think a little bit more, actually. There we are, that should be enough. And we'll just squish that down. There we are, that should stop it catching and getting any worse. And then since we've got this stack done, I think we'll uh, sort them into two wedges here. I'm going to give these a brush as we go along this time. Quite a bit of dust coming off there. I don't know if it was off these books or if it was off my last cleaning video. Probably a bit of both, I think. made a huge difference to those. These have never ever, they may have been cleaned historically by me in the past, but they've never ever had their top edges brushed off like I do nowadays. But that did seem to be an awful lot of dust and dirt coming off those. So that's a good sign. I mean, that's why we're here doing this. Lovely. Putting 
incredible amount of dust and dirt come off those early ones, but don't mind that. That's why we're here. Okay, so we'll carry on there with the next batch, 178. Chaos is come again. A slightly more worn one that, but ultimately it's okay. Black Mischief. Now this one's actually still in a wrapper. So this is one of the uh, ones that's been protected all these years. And uh, absolutely fine. It's just like a little layer of dust accumulates under dust wrappers sometimes. And that's just what I've sort of wiped out. Very nice in, that, nice in its wrapper like that. 180, Tales from Chekhov. It's funny, as I've been going through my collection and cleaning them, I've been making a little note about which ones I need to upgrade. And uh, it seems in the few times I've looked since I've been doing this, um, the numbers that I need to upgrade in nice copies don't seem to be around and um, so it's going to be quite a long old process but with penguin book collecting you need to be patient you can't find everything straight out you just couldn't go out there and buy every book because they're just not all out there you need to be patient and wait for them to uh to come onto the market you know which is fine because they always do eventually but I'm still missing uh, six from the first thousand in first edition. So, and I've been collecting 30 years. It's just um, sometimes they've turned up and I've missed them. Or um, they've turned up and to buy them, your name has needed to have been drawn out of a, a lucky dip hat, basically. And uh, depending on where you were in the draw, depended on if you were able to get the uh, book in question. Eight four selected short stories of Saki. a bit of um well they call it toning really where it's it's got uh, an edge tone where there's been another book on top of it and the book has picked up dirt like that but fortunately nothing i can do about that this is a nice one 187 i have a feeling that quite a few of these that look really nice is because i've got the dust wrappers kept separately that is my suspicion anyway because these Penguin books are amongst the earliest paperbacks I ever collected. So I used to take the dust wrappers off. Now this one's a rare one, but he's not in the greatest of condition, number 188. In fact, you could say he was very much a beater. <laughs> so I guess this is one that's going to go on my list of ones to upgrade. I don't like upgrading crime if I can help it because they're so expensive. But I think in that case, I'm going to need to. Okay then, so let's pop these into two wedges and uh, we'll give these the brush down. can't believe the amount of dust and dirt coming off these actually, much more than I was thinking. And again, I don't think any of them have ever been done. At least not recently. In the last five to ten years. Maybe longer. See the debris coming off them.
and this brush is really so efficient like getting the dust and dirt off it really is something Lovely. We'll start a second pile there of these. What a mess. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we're here. Okay then, so we got 189. But soft we are observed. Hilaire Belloc. That's interesting. So far... Not a single book has needed a price stick, uh, price rubbed out of it. You know, bookseller's price. And there's a little one there. This is interesting. It says in the corner, 10th of the 11th, 82. Duplicate is what it says. So someone had two copies of this one. Whoever that was. Back in 1982, blimey. That's a long time collector, isn't it? Although, I've actually got a magazine which has got three articles on penguin book collecting. And it's from 1950. So, penguins, I guess, have always been on the radar for collectors. And one of the main things about them, of course, is because um, they're numbered. Yes, yeah, so the number 191, it sort of lends itself like I don't know, comic books that you want to sort of get all the numbers if you can. It certainly is a bit of an addiction. <laughs> it's a nice bright one, isn't it? And it's in a wrapper. It's a really bright wrapper as well. 193. Another nice travel one. Yeah, very nice indeed. Look at the brightness of that. Considering its age, it's a very, very nice one indeed. Helene, Vicky Ball, 195, The City of Beautiful Nonsense. is four plays by yeah a. a Milne the author of Winnie the Pooh story of an African farm this is another one in a wrapper all the bits of a wrapper by the look of it Slide that one out. Let's have a look through underneath. Look, it's a beauty. Absolute minter. And the wrapper is not bad either, so it can continue to live in its wrapper. If they're not too bad or too fragile, I don't mind keeping them in them. Else I, uh, I pull them off and I um, keep them in a box, a dust wrapper's box. Which might seem a bit silly, but they look so much better on the shelf. If they're in a tatty dust wrapper, you know, there's a chance that they'll get damaged if I was to take the book out and that. I'd rather not take that risk. Lovely. Put them in that stack there. Let's give these a brush. Can't 
can't believe the dust coming off some of these. Lovely. And we're going to do one more wedge here. Some more lovely books. I really like this period of Penguin. The books are just so gorgeous they're beautifully made and they're they are so nice to read these ones just great play for number 200 bernard shaw um for quite a while bernard shaw got all the anniversary numbers and this one was no different, number 200. Great one, this. Real favourite of mine. It's uh, First World War Escape Stories. Nice copy of that as well. I'm pleased with that one. Yeah. This one I read in that exact edition. Quite a fan of um, Second World War escape stories, or First World War and Second World War, and uh, that particular book became a bit of a handbook for Second World War officers who were uh, caught up in occupied Europe. They used the uh, the memoirs of the First World War officers who'd escaped as, to get a few ideas from which certainly uh, seemed to be a good idea at the time. <laughs> there we are. So I reckon we're just a touch over halfway through, so it's a great point to uh, thank my Patreon and channel members. So thank you guys and girls. Okay then, 203. Very nice copy of that one. Once again, I'm certain um, that one's got a uh, dust wrapper. Once again, though, in the top left corner, it's got 10th... Of November 82 duplicate so let's grab this other one here and we'll get that bit of uh, pencil out because it may have been a duplicate to whoever last owned this but it's not a duplicate for me I generally don't have many duplicate penguins I try and put them all on my eBay page and uh, there's always a link to my eBay auctions in the description down below so if you ever are looking for old paperbacks uh, check those out I have about four or five hundred pounds still to list and I have sold some in bulk to people and um, but I've not really got the time at the moment not while I'm working full-time to keep going through and um, list in every single book book by book i just don't have that time yet but if there is something in particular you're after just um give me a uh an email at julesburg at gmail.com and i'll have a look and see if i have got it this is a travel one here 205 and this is warm so when i edit this i'm going to put this one on my um upgrade list because it really is compared to the other ones of this period um it really is in quite a sorry old state and it's not particularly rare i don't think so I might as well get get that one replaced, I think. 206. It's another one, not in the greatest of conditions. Yeah, that the It's come away. It's come away. So we need to re-glue that spine. But that'll be an easy enough job. So what I'm gonna do is um Be quite liberal with my Pritt stick here. Get it right down the uh, spine there. Like so. And then I'll also put a run on the uh, the book itself. It's not a big thick one, so it's a fairly easy fix, this one. But I think ultimately, it's going to be one I might, considering how nice the other ones are from this period in my collection, it may be one that I decide I'm going to upgrade as well. So, because I, I need so few of these now, um, 
I've got to that stage where I'm on the lookout for upgraded copies. You compare that to something like that, which looks absolutely beautiful. A little bit of page edge browning, but look at that. What a beautiful, beautiful copy. That's lovely, isn't it? Even if I say so myself. Lovely. Give these a brush. Lots of dust coming off here. that quite dark one there that's really benefited from uh, having the uh, top edges wiped off you can still see a little bit of it there but this is the one that I'm gonna upgrade so I'm not too worried about it in fact just target it a little bit more accurately with the uh, toothbrush. on there and then we'll start our third pile over here Let's give it a, a wipe down no polishing today sadly these books are too old and they haven't got anything that you can polish safely it would just uh, make the books it would damage them basically it would damage them okay then number 17 very nice copy of a. Uh, well, this, yeah, I was going to say, we've not had many crime today, but we've got quite a few coming out. That's a lovely, uh, lovely copy of that one, indeed, in its wrapper. That's very, very nice indeed. 210, a man lay dead. And look, that's got some writing at the back there. I'm not going to try and read what that says, but it's still a nice copy. And it's wrapper, which is nice. Pip, Pip, Ian Hay. The fluff or something on the side there. <laughs> Literary lapses. If you do like what you see on this channel and you want to uh, support my efforts because this channel's not monetized it's not got a thousand subscribers so i'm not allowed to make anything out of it yet um the links are below you can go and uh, join the patreon or the link to my other channel and join that one and you will uh, be helping me out Keeping everything ticking over while I make these videos for you. And you also get your name in the credits. Fame at last, eh? indeed 215 store of ladies 
And that's got quite a bit of um it's got quite a bit of page edge browning it's just generally what you would call grubby isn't it and there's no two ways around it so it's a copy but it's a bit grubby here's a little run of crime titles now so hopefully they're all uh quite nice verdict of you all that was okay death at the opera Yeah, that one's all right. Big thick one here, Missing From Home. Big old book, this one. Yeah, over 300 pages, much bigger than the uh, standard penguin of this period. So one more, Police at the Funeral. And uh, there's got a tiny bit of the spine there, so we're gonna re-glue that whilst we're here. So let me get a slither of glue onto that. It will only be a little bit, um, but it may take a couple of passes because it's sort of that multi-layered one. So let's slide, slide that first bit in there, like so. And there we are. Just stop it getting any worse. And I think we'll give those a brush while we're here. Very, very dusty, some of these. Literally, you wouldn't believe the dust that's flown around in here. I'm gonna to have to do something about this, I think. <laughs> Needs to be a bit more ventilated in the studio here. <sighs> right, our last little batch to do now. Crime here, another one in a wrapper. JC Masterton. Very nice indeed. It's an unusually designed one there for 211 de Valerie. Quite a beaten up copy that one. That's going to go on my upgrade list because it's not very, not exactly expensive that one. Of dust there or something of fluff. That's why I always flick these through a few times if they're looking a bit suspect. Okay, let's give these a brush. These do seem quite dusty on top. seem quite dark but it's better certainly improved those ones Camberwell Miracle it's got a burn on the back look at that you see it's got burnt someone probably rested a cigarette on it historically damn liberties eh Two to five and two to six. So there you are. So I hope you have enjoyed. 
looking through and enjoying me cleaning these. If you have, do please hit that subscribe button. Brand new cleaning video every Saturday. Thanks for watching today. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.